Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest in the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. Okay, so today we have Danielle Patterson on the line, and she's CEO and owner over at Family Office List LLC. Danielle, welcome to the show. Thanks, Adam. So pleased to be here. All right, Danielle. So as I was getting ready for this, I was thinking about how you mentioned that family office list, you know, the journey of going from an Excel spreadsheet into something, <laughs> the, the powerhouse of your list and your organization and what you do. I'm like, oh man, we're going to have some fun today talking about how that was like, because I think about Mission Matters and I'm like, oh my gosh, the day we got off of some of these spreadsheets, it was like, <laughs> oh, like the, you know, the, it just part of oh, you saw the come out. <laughs> Oh, yes. I feel your pain. I, I totally understand the journey. Oh, so so talk to me. How, how did all this get started? Like, where, where, where did, was it, were you planning on being at the helm of, you know, a family office, like the, that community? What, 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 how did that start? Yeah, no, I totally joke to people. I was kind of like this accidental entrepreneur, and I feel so fortunate to did have you, gotten hold on, hold on. Did involved. You, did, you read, did you read my book, Danielle, Driven? Because no. that's, what, that's what I call myself in there, Accidental Stop. Entrepreneur, Tale of Two Cities. No joke. It's like a tale of okay. two cities. There's me and one other author. The other author is a serial entrepreneur that like started, sold a bunch of businesses. Me, I'm the accidental entrepreneur. No And way. the whole narrative in the entire book is that. So when you said well, that, I'm like, did you? Hold I'm on, glad wait a we minute. are kindred spirits, and now I can't wait to read your book. But uh, because that's truly, I think, you know, I have all the characteristics of an entrepreneur. You know, I, you know, I'm very passionate, very driven, but mm -hmm. I think I'm more of a risk adverse type person. So, yeah. you know, I first started working eight years ago with the original founder of Family Office List. His name is Douglas Fathers. And, you know, he essentially created, you know, this Excel spreadsheet due to there being limited to no resources available when he was raising capital for his first hedge fund. Now, that was in the early 2000s. And like many fund managers, they kind of go to their friends, their family, then they start to explore the ultra high net worth world. Mm -hmm. And boom, that's where he discovered family offices, which were very, you know, secretive. The the websites, the presence that they have today was, you know, little to none. So he spent a lot mm -hmm. of time networking and building this resource that later in his career, as he was advising others and helping them with their capital raising, realized, you know, this is a really great tool. And that's how Family Office List was born. So for years, it was, you know, just this static Excel spreadsheet. And, you know, offered some value, but what I realized, you know, in getting to know the family office sector better is no two are alike. I mean, mm. by, by having a list, you're really encouraging the spray and pray method as if they all operate under the same guise. And so to really add value to not only a client who's looking to align and connect, but also to the mm -hmm. family office who is increasingly looking for, you know, unique, well-aligned deal flow, we can help fix this problem for both ends if we create re really accurate profiles. So I decided, you know, this needs to be more than a list. We need first and foremost a dedicated research team who's going to be, you know, going out there, understanding each of these family offices investment objectives, you know, creating more, mm -hmm. you know, a description, origins of wealth. So we really can can relate and put ourselves in this family's shoes to understand how can I come to you with a, a value proposition, you know, not just throw some irrelevant pitch your way. So mm -hmm. being that this data was so aggressively being, you know, maintained and increased and, and we needed a better delivery mechanism, you know, this whole world of Excel spreadsheets is just so frustrating, yeah. you know, all the, the the room for human error and you know, it's just archaic, and I, I do laugh because as much as the family office sector is growing and, and new technology solutions are popping up everywhere, they are still mm. so far behind the time for holding such wealth. You know, it's such yeah. kind of many of them. But again, we can't we can't speak. You know, um, we can't say a one size fits all because each one is unique. But but yeah, so we're really excited to now have this platform that's very dynamic. It really focuses on subscribers coming in and learning, applying filters so that they're really aligning based on each family office's objectives. And then we're mm. 
just launched this month a really awesome masterclass series because, you know, again, it's all about understanding the sector, gaining insights into the evolving trends, how we can position ourselves to, you know, better better serve and, and work with family offices because, you know, they, they've got challenges all their own, you know, family, yeah. it's not easy. The succession planning is probably one of the hardest issues facing family offices right now, I yeah. think. Before yeah. we go into that part, let's take just yeah. one step back. I want to make sure, that, and I know you said, so something you said struck me. And for my long-term listeners, they know, I mean, I was in finance for almost 14 years before going into media now, going on eight years. But you, you mentioned no two family offices are alike. So there still is, I feel like for many, a lot of mystification or like, what is a family office? So maybe yes. let's let's take a step back there and define that a little bit and have talk about that a little before we go into maybe some of the current day challenges. So what is Absolutely. a family office? <laughs> yes. And I love the question because you could literally ask a room <laughs> full of I know. That's family why I'm offices. asking the, the, the family office list CEO. That's yeah. why. <laughs> and they would all give you a different answer because there yep. is no real formal structure. Now, of course, for us, we're trying to help mm. clients demystify this fragmented world. So yeah. we do categorize. We have single family offices. Now those are like the entities set up to manage the wealth of an individual family. Typically, you know, came into their wealth through, you know, the exit of a business. You know, it depends on how old the family office is. You know, we see multiple multiple generations, you know, where they've successfully been able to transfer the wealth. But with mm -hmm. the tech boom, we've seen a huge surge in, in all these newly formed family offices. But then you also get multifamily offices. So this is where, say, the all of the professionals that are, you know, taking care of the, you know, wealth management and the investments and, say, the taxes and the, you know, the trust formation and the household affairs, rather than having that all for your individual family, because they say to justify the cost of running a single family office, you typically need net worth of 250 million. So say you want to form or be a part of a family office, maybe you don't quite have that net worth to justify doing it all on your own, you can join a multifamily office. And these are typically, you know, service providers for several well aligned families. And it just makes sense, you know, you don't have to build from the ground up, they have, you know, existing mm -hmm. Um, professionals to provide these solutions. And then we also see a lot of um, family foundations. So oftentimes you can have a single family office who then has more of a philanthropic arm and they set up a foundation where they can do more of their charitable charitable investments. Mm -hmm. And as this and looking, term is becoming, yeah, increasingly recognized, we, we do see a lot of wealth advisors offering family office services, kind of calling mm -hmm. themselves family offices. So we really do our diligence to make sure, you know, our list is clean and they're, they're truly family offices allocating. Mm -hmm. And looking back into kind of some of the, the evolution of this, when you think about mm -hmm. like where all of this came from, it was really, you know, some of the really wealthy people in the country as their fortunes grew and they had to build these teams around themselves in order to manage, you know, all of this wealth that they were accumulating. I would say like industrialization, like that's probably like mm -hmm. when it, the seed of it all. And then as, as you know, it matured, then this concept, and I love the fact that you brought up this idea that at one point you had to have like minimum net worth of 250 million or something else, like for the cost to, to justify wow. it. But I like some of these, like now as we get further with AI, with technology, with everything else that allows us to, that allows the office structure itself to decrease some of the, maybe some of the costs that they would have had in the past, the, the, the access I would argue to family offices and that type of family office network. It's just, it's, it's widened for many, I would argue. Am I, am I off absolutely. on that? Kind of like the evolution? No, I absolutely see that evolution taking place. Actually, one of our newest partners, they are the mm. Digital Evolution Institute, and they are committed to just helping keep abreast of all these technological advancements specifically in how they relate to the family office sector. And mm -hmm. I think there are more traditional managers and they, you know, prefer to do things their way. And, you know, maybe it's job security, you know, but right. they want to do things, you know, with a handshake and they're that trusted advisor. But I think as we see the rising next gen, you know, we are living in a tech enabled 
world. And so it only makes sense that we take advantage of those efficiencies and that, you know, as we invite the next generation into these investment decisions, that they're given tools that they relate to, you know, and they're given processes to streamline. And what I love is, you know, just the transparency it can create. So, you know, I think one of the hardest challenges that these family offices have, say, when they want to invest in a startup is is doing the due diligence. And, you know, you get these venture mm-hmm. firms that have all these processes and these big teams in place, but, you know, a family office, it can be complex. So that's where I am really excited about some of these new AI solutions and tech enabled yeah. platforms that really help with that. Let's talk from the, you know, kind of how you started this conversation, how you kind of figured it out, like some, you know, a company wants a founder is thinking about raising, you know, raising capital or things like that. And then all of a sudden they hear this term and then it's like, oh, well, you know, obviously no high net worth, ultra high net worth and this family office term comes in. So now, I mean that you, you know, you've been doing this now, I think eight years in my off on this. Yeah, roughly? you're right. Wow. Mm-hmm. We're, we're eight years too. Come on, Mission ah, Matters is eight years too. So we started at the same crazy. time on the same, did we have the same Excel sheet? No. <laughs> <laughs> so eight years and eight years, we're, we're twins. So now obviously vantage point from your end and, and obviously you're creating the categories, you're creating the, the method and the technology around listing, categorizing, updating. How do founders, and let's go back to that original problem, that original develop dilemma, like how do founders get on the on the radar of these family offices? Like how does yeah. that happen? So that is the hardest challenge. You know, this it's all about relationship. These family offices, you know, they're long-term investors. They're, you know, building their wealth for the generations to come, which is a huge benefit. Versus just for a to founder. kind of juxtapose that for everyone. I want to make sure they caught that. Long-term investors <laughs> versus maybe, you know, venture capital or something that they want a exactly. quick exit or like, so exactly. just to juxtapose that. So everybody caught it. It's a different type of investor. They're thinking maybe multi-generational for a particular investment, possibly. I, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think that what's nice is, you know, if you have a long-term horizon and you're really building something, they can be that great strategic partner. That's not just looking mm. for that quick, immediate, you know, sale or, you know, exit. They can, you know, really help bring their network and their expertise. So Mm -hmm. really thinking about, you know, who your perfect investor looks like. And Mm -hmm. and so the family office does really offer a lot of benefits from, you know, their Oh, I like that you said network too, by the way. Mm -hmm, A hundred percent. And so in terms of how do you get in front of them, you know, many of them, are putting themselves out there because they want to receive deal flow. But how do you make Mm. your pitch stand apart from the hundreds that, you know, small team might be receiving? I had a call this morning with a firm. They said they looked at, gosh, like 3,000 deals. Of that, they invested in nine. And I'm I'm the eternal optimist. When oh, I heard that, I'm like, oh, they oh, invested in nine. That's amazing. But be, but three thousand deals. Three thousand deals. And how? Deals. Wow. Was that per year, maybe, or I don't even know. That, no, yes, it was. Oh, it was deal. per deal. This was the gentleman that runs all the venture <laughs> investing for the Coolers family. So yeah, you know, mm. and he. I was always curious, well, like, how do you find these deals? And interestingly, mm. you know, he travels and he goes to the colleges. And so he's looking, you know, every every firm has their different strategy. Wow, but so they he's like boots on the ground. That's boots on the ground. He's literally ground. going to the colleges. Wow. Exactly. Like he's in Europe right now. He's going to Oxford. So I'm hopeful that, you know, in the months to come, these technologies mm. can help make that process more efficient. But it also is sometimes being in person and that energy. And so I encourage founders to, you know, really think about what differentiates you. And as a person, you know, these, these family offices are typically investing in you, the person and the, you know, the, Mm -hmm. not just, you know, the individual opportunity. And Mm -hmm. so sharing your story in an authentic way that helps create that connection And when talking about network, you know, I'm a huge advocate of LinkedIn. I think, you know, you can really leverage LinkedIn and, you know, do you have common connections and opportunities for warm introductions? And if not, and you just need to do a cold pitch, let's not make it like a copy paste generic. Let's really show you've done your research and that this is a value proposition based on your understanding, you know, of what they 
invest in. And I think immediately that respect and showing, you know, the time you've taken to understand what, what's important to them versus just, you know, I need capital. Mm. So you also have some big news coming up, right? A, a version 2.0, little birdie tells yes. me. Well, what's that all about? Yes. So super excited. You know, everything I've done has been self-funded. And, you know, throughout building this, we always rely on client feedback. And it's just yeah. been the key to our success. And so we launched our subscription model about a year and a half ago. And, you know, everyone in, in SaaS, it's, it's the way to go. And so the, the revenue is there. And I've just started working, you know, last year with this amazing dynamic development team out of Ukraine. And mm. we are, yes, releasing our new tech stack. And so it will just be faster, prettier. And then we really are building in a lot more beyond the data. So insights, the master classes, resources, because, you know, there's there's just not much out there. You know, I went to Web Summit in November last year, spoke with a lot of mm -hmm. these startup founders. And it's amazing still how many people don't know the term family office. And so just help, you know, shine the light and provide guidance that will benefit the family offices, but the, the founders as well. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me because it can be it can be tricky, especially if somebody's just going the entrepreneur route for the first time or they just mm -hmm. have their first idea and they have all these different terms and and not to not to stereotype on age, but you know, obviously the um, you know, somebody's in uh in college and they're maybe a little bit younger just getting started, yeah. like they're they're busy on their idea. They don't <laughs> they're exactly. they're they may be the inventor, they may not be the implementer, right? Like there's a lot of different right. scenarios. So that doesn't surprise me. So Danielle, I just have to say it has been enlightening having you on the show. And I, when I talked to the other co-founder, Shirag, when we, he was always, so Shirag, which I always talk about my listeners know, other co-founder at Mission Matters, he was always somehow, you know, kind of connected to or part of the family office network. And just in general, he's been doing it for years and years, probably, I think even before we've known each other, we've been together for, as partners for eight years. But that networking part, I want to dig just a little bit deeper yes. because- these the network and he's opened my eyes to it and when you if you're a yeah. founder out there and you're if, it's, if you're thinking about is it worth it just like family office what i love about family office that sector in particular is that just like they're long-term investors in companies they're also long-term investors in relationships and people so it's the same people year over year that some have had, you know, decades of relationships in that sector. Like they're typically, it tends to be pretty stable. So a lot of, a lot of times the individuals, unlike, and I'll, let me juxtapose that so everybody knows what I'm yeah. talking about. Unlike, let's just say your local, no offense, because I was the local financial advisor, but your local financial advisor who was maybe at a large company, whatever, whatever, he moved to this company, moved to that company. The people that I find are in the family office space a lot of times, if they've been with that firm and they're, you know, managing either, like you said, a single family or multiple families, like they're not like hopping from firm to firm or changing. And they're pretty consistent. What this creates is this just amazing network of people in the know. If they're it's not investing in your product doesn't. and it's the right product and they know another family office that it's like, you know, we don't do this, but, you know, I might know somebody. It's just a different feeling. Can you tell me what from your vantage point, like being on the other side, because I consider you an insider there because you have yeah. the list, right? So, so I'm, <laughs> I'm a podcaster, so I'm kind of an insider. I've, I've interviewed a couple hundred of them, but I'm not like you. So from your vantage point, like talk about the power of that network and what you've seen. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, I mean, just talking about the power of the network, like I met your partner, Shirag, at a networking event thrown by a partner of ours, David Homan, mm -hmm. who runs Orchestrated Connecting. And the whole thesis behind his company is really, you know, just the power of these relationships. And it doesn't mm -hmm. immediately show it's, you know, like this tangible value, but it's that you continue to foster and you show up with a giving spirit and, you know, a genuine interest in others and how you can help. Mm -hmm. And it's like wildfire. I mean, it spreads. And I think within this community of family offices, that's what, you know, we really try to, to teach. It's taking a value add approach. And even if you're not asking for something, but you're introducing them to someone or sharing, you know, a, a tool or a resource, um, I just think it goes so far and, you know, that, that what you were saying about them and if it's not a deal for them, 
so many of these families co-invest with each other because it helps mm -hmm. them if it wasn't the, their niche industry expertise they can rely on a family they know and trust and maybe have co-invested with and they can help them with that due diligence so they do they they have very tight-knit networks and they want to see these deals and if it's not maybe for them or maybe it is and they get another family to co-invest mm -hmm. alongside so the network is tremendous and you know i think the more you can do to offer value and you know, just just to continue to foster. There's a lot of great industry events, you know, David Holman's being one through Orchestrated Connecting. Um, we have partners, DC Finance, and I know you guys do a lot of um, amazing events. And I think, you know, being in a room, that energy, it it really, there's something to be said for it, you know. Ah, that's a, I think that's a great way to end it, Danielle. Something to be said <laughs> for it. If you haven't explored, then I encourage everybody listening, explore. Also, if somebody wants more information on family office list or to connect, what's the best way for them to do that? Yes, thank you for that. I'm active on LinkedIn, Danielle Patterson. We also have family office list page. And then, of course, our website, www.familyofficelist.org. Fantastic. And we'll, we'll be sure to put that information in the show notes so our audience can just click on the links and head right on over. And speaking of the audience, if this is your first time with Mission Matters and you haven't hit that subscribe button, hey, if you need an invitation, this is your invitation. Hit that subscribe <laughs> button. We have many more mission-based individuals coming up and we don't want you to miss a thing. Danielle, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much again for coming. Yes. On. Thank you, Adam. That was a lot of fun. Thank you so much.